very quickly, I thought about what to preach for Father's Day. And I thought about the theme that uh, Pastor Roe had given me. And so I was going to preach about uh, the type, topic is dealing with honor. And so I was wrestling with uh, the story of David and Mephibosheth and how he still wanted to honor Saul, even though Saul was trying to kill him. And how he came and sat him at the table. And from the waist up, he looked normal. But from the waist down, he was broken, dealing with broken men. But I'll preach that next time. Then the Lord took me over to Genesis. And I was going to preach about the ark and how Noah, uh, the only reason his family was saved was because God gave the father the vision. And how all of this transpired and, 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 and how the ark represents the church and and yes, it was some stinky stuff going on inside of that ark. But how many of you know that the church there can be some stinky stuff going on inside? But, but many of us don't understand that God would rather us deal with the stinky stuff than deal with the storm that's on the outside. And so I was going to talk about that, and then God took me another way. So this is the way we're going to go this morning. Um, I'm going to give it to you straight. No chaser. And so we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17, and, 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 and so when dealing with honor, the Lord said, I want you to talk to them today about the process of honor. And, and, and watch this. We talk about honor, and we talk about honoring other things. And we, 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 we give a lot of credit to other things that we honor and other people, as we should. The Bible tells us to. But the Lord said, you have to honor your journey. Your journey, your individual journey that you are on right now, no one can feel what you feel. No one can, 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 can take on the pain that you've taken on. No one. I, I, can, I, can, I can preach all day about Ruth and Esther and, 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 and Samson, but I'm going to talk about you today and your journey. So let's, let's, let's look at this real quick. It's 10 verses of Scripture. And it's dealing with David and 1 Samuel. And this is what it says from the new NIV. He says, he then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter. And the men answered him as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul. And Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. Just because you can't do it don't mean I can't do it. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from his mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go. And the Lord be with you. I want to talk about the honor of this journey. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to digress a little bit. And I'm going to deal with something that some of us can relate to. Um, in 1984, there was a movie written by Robert Mark Kamen. And it was starving Ralph Macchio, Pat Morita, and William Zabka. That was an amazing, heartwarming story. And the story dealt with uh, a martial arts master who wanted to teach karate to a bully teenager. This movie is known as, oh, y'all are preaching with me. So, so Daniel then moves from New Jersey, which is the second greatest state in the, outside of New York, to California, and because she has a wonderful opportunity and a wonderful job chance, and this dark-haired Italian kid with an accent didn't fit in with the blonde-haired surfer boy crowd, 
Daniel wasn't ready for what was getting ready to come. And because one of the key components in life, if we will all be honest, is we all want to be accepted. We all want to belong to somewhere or in, in somebody. And so Daniel manages to talk his way out of some fights that he wasn't ready for. Then he finally is cornered, and y'all know what happened when he got cornered. They beat him half to death. And as he's passing out, Daniel sees this maintenance man, this gardener, by the name of Mr. Miyagi, who comes to his rescue and jumps into the fray and starts to fight on his behalf against almost a dozen teenagers. Isn't that just like our Heavenly Father, that when we come against situations that are too much for us, that he'll jump into the fight and begin to fight our battles for us? This is why he said over in Exodus 14 and 14, he said to Moses, be not afraid. These Egyptians you see today, you'll see no more. And another translation, another verse, he said, be still and I will fight your battles. All you have to do is be silent. Understanding this in Deuteronomy 20 and 4, it says, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you and he fights against your enemies to give you the victory. Know that this is not your fight. But this battle is the Lord's. Every single time you come up against something, it is not necessarily something for you to respond to uh, in, in your flesh. But sometimes you just have to be still and be quiet and let God fight on your behalf. Can I give you another scripture? Second Chronicles 20 and 15. And he said, listen, all of Judah and inhabitants, inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. And do not be dismayed at this great horde or this great army because this battle is not yours. And what you have to understand on this morning about your process and about honor, we're about to get into it, trust me, it'll all tie in, is that no matter what, you have to know who's on your side. The same God who put the sun in place and the same God who put the expanse between the land and the sky, the same God, amen, who put the lesser light in place to govern by night. The same God who, who told the sea to come only but so far. Do you, do you know how amazing that is that the sea, if it wasn't told where to go, that it will overwhelm us and take us? That's how much the uh, water expanse is on the earth. But God told it to come so far before it would have to recede. What makes you think that when an enemy or a fight or a situation or a temptation comes up against you, that he won't have enough power to deal with it? You have to know who's on your side. And on this morning, God sent me here to tell you that no matter what you're facing and no matter what you're going through, he's on your side. He's on your side. And this is the beautiful part. You would have been swallowed up a long time ago if the Lord was not on your side. And this is why he said, uh, 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 if, if, if God be for us in Romans uh, chapter 8 and 31, then who can be against us? So as you leave this place, because we know that there will be a benediction and there will be a test outside those doors, you need to know that God is on your side. And if he's for you, who can be against you? He's more than the world against you. He's more than any political office. He's more than a job. He's more than anything. And if he is on your side, then he's more, God with you is more than the world against you. Somebody just declare, I have help. So Mr. Miyagi and Daniel, let me go back to that. Miyagi and Daniel soon find themselves in this unlikely alliance. And, 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 and they find out the real motivator behind these boys' violent behavior is in the form of a karate teacher named Kreese. And he's feeding them no mercy, no retreat, no, oh, yeah, I know the movie, no surrender. He's feeding them this. And always understand this. Oh, we're about to work it. Miyagi promises to teach Daniel karate and to fight at the All-Valley Tournament some months off. And Daniel wasn't ready. So when his training begins, Daniel doesn't understand what he's being shown. So Miyagi asks him to do one thing. Don't question my method. 
And here it is. Isn't that just like God? That you'll get into a situation, and this is the beautiful thing about it. When God calls you, he declares the end from the beginning, but he doesn't show you the in between. Oh, come on. We're getting ready to work, y'all. God will show you how blessed you're going to be, how wonderful it is. He'll show you everything in the end, but he never shows you the in between. Moses, I want you to go and tell my people, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But he didn't show him 600 chariots chasing him. He didn't show him with his family uh, uh, turning against him at the, at, the, uh, at the Red Sea. He didn't show him uh, 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 having to face the Red Sea. He showed him none of that stuff. But the beautiful thing about it is God told him, what do you have in your hand? All he had was a staff. I almost preached this one. I got the magic stick. He took his staff and he extended it out. And when he extended it out, it parted the sea. Because God said, what you have in your hand is more than enough to get the victory over where it is that you are right now. And sometimes we're looking for help. And sometimes we're looking for people. And sometimes we're looking for the answer to come from the outside. And God says, what you have in your hand is more than enough. Somebody just declare amen and look at their hand and say, I have more than enough. Whether, whether, whether it's a handful of meal and some oil, whether it's two fish and five loaves, whatever you have in your hand, God says it is more than enough to get the job done. Ro, don't look elsewhere. What you have in this sanctuary is more than enough to take the city. Whatever you have, God gave it to you, and he gave it to you for a specific reason and says that it's more than enough. So here it is. He takes them, and now... He's telling them to stain a gate, sand, a walkway. He's telling him to paint a fence. He's telling him to wax a car. Wax on, wax off. That's where it all came from. And he's doing this stuff. Once again, we're going to get to honor. We're going to get to talking about the process of it. But he's doing this stuff not understanding that as he's doing it, something's happening. As he's doing it, something's happening. And this is what it is that God wants us to understand, that when you understand the process and how he moves, that you will understand that there's seemingly a lack of increase and training going on. Daniel gets mad. He said, I ain't doing this no more, just like many of us. And guess what happens? He expresses his anger and frustration, and Miyagi asks him to show me wax on, wax off, not realizing that the chores were practice for his defense, that it was building muscle tone, that it was helping his reflexes, that it was getting him ready. And in every exercise, he would tell him to breathe. He was training the entire time, learning from the things that don't look like they are teaching us will cause you to dishonor your own calling and anointing. He's teaching you how to be who it is that he's called you to be. He's teaching you how to be a better dad. He's teaching you how to be a better man. He's teaching you. And this is why you can't get caught up in somebody else's story because you don't know what it costs for them to be there, which I'm going to talk about before the end of this message. But when you understand that God is taking you through something to teach you, to train you, that Abba Father, that I would rather know him as Abba than God because God consists of judgment. But Abba consists of chastity and love. That's the one that we want to get to know. And so many people only know him from one way and one perspective that they don't get to know him as being Abba Father. So understand, what you're going through, you're growing through. What you're facing, you're stretching from. What you're dealing with, it teaches you how to be the person that God wants you to be. And it may not look like much, but God is working on something. God is working on something in you that nobody else will be able to take credit for. God is working on something in you that nobody else will be able to say that they were the reason that this happened. And God says that if I do it, you don't give anybody else the glory and the praise but me and me alone. Here's the key. This is just the way the Lord will do it. When he is ready to get you ready, he will use everything and anything possible to get you ready. And though 
the method may not be conventional. Here it is. The results are undeniable. The method may not be like everybody else. Hear me. I didn't go to Bible college. I didn't go to seminary. I'm not, I'm not against that stuff. I'm for it. But guess what? When God wanted to teach me, he took me down on my knees and started using me. I, I had to clean. I had to pray. I had to carry bags. I had to do things that people weren't doing. But guess what? God was saying, if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. You can't expect the great big things and not be faithful over the small things that he gives you. You got to honor the process. Oh. Here it is. You ready? Somebody has got to understand that in this process, it's not to destroy you, but it's to make you better. And you have got to understand, watch this, what I'm getting ready to say. You've got to understand that God has better for you. There are so many people, Pastor, who self-sabotage because they don't think they're worthy. Oh, y'all getting this? They don't think they're worthy, so instead of them allowing God to really, really use them the way he wants to use them, they would rather self-sabotage their own blessing. But God is saying on today, amen, I brought Kenny here to tell you this, that I'm taking the shackles off of you, that there is no more self-sabotage. I got greater for you. I'm expecting you to do more. I called you to do more. Amen. I've called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I called you to move. I didn't call you to be still. I didn't call you to be stagnant, but I called you because I have an assignment on your life. Why do you think you survived the things that you have survived? Why do you think that other people didn't and you're still here? You survived COVID. We've had red, blue, purple, and green smoke all over the city. You survived some things that other people did not. But God said, I kept you here because I have a reason for you to be here. And you need to know without a shadow of a doubt that you will accomplish what I have called for you to do. Here it is. It's undeniable. It's undeniable. It's undeniable. It's undeniable. Watch this. When God is on your side, it's undeniable who you're rocking with. When God is with you, it's undeniable because you understand who gets the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's undeniable because you know that you should have been dead. It's undeniable. It's undeniable. I say it all the time. But for you to still be clothed in your right mind after what you have gone through, it's undeniable. It's undeniable. I tell people, my mind, Marquez, is being held together by tape, bubble gum, and a shoestring. That's what my mind is being held together by. But thank God for the little bit of righteous mind that I have to serve him and worship him and keep pressing forward and keep going. Because this is the reason why God has kept you here. Because he has greater for you. So this is the first thing that you have to do. When you rocking with God, people should know what team you represent. Sorry, New York, ain't no giant stuff in my closet. Sorry, ain't no, ain't no Jets, no Kansas City. I'm a Steelers fan, through and through. I walked in here, I said, boy, this Met country. With a splash, with a, with, a, with a splash of Yankee. I saw it. 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 And 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 a dash of every other team represented here. But this is the point I'm trying to make. When you look at me, you know what team I represent. When we look, when I look at you, I know what team you represent. Watch what I'm getting ready to say. Shouldn't it be the same way with the body of Christ when people look at us that they should know what team we represent and who we represent and who's our father and who's who we're standing with? People should know and be able to tell who we're representing without us even opening up our mouths because of how we handle situations. Whereas in one season of our lives, I might have handled it this way. But because God has blessed me, I now handle it a different way. And people can tell what team you rocking with. Oh, here it is. In order to get to that place, you have to change, number one, your perspective. You have to honor your perspective. You have to honor the perspective. Your vintage view has to change. 
This is what I mean by vintage view. Stop looking at situations the way that you want to look at them, but tap into the spirit and see the, the way that God sees them. Let me, let me give you that again. Stop looking at situations the way that you want to see them. And start looking at situations, you have to tap into the spirit in order to see them the way that God sees them. Because if you keep looking at it the way that you want to, you're going to find yourself angry. You're going to find yourself disappointed. You're going to find yourself mad. But hear this. Jesus, I'll get to that in a second. But, but the Lord is saying, when you look at situations the way that I do, you don't respond the way that other people do. Jesus tells them in Mark chapter 4, let's go over to the other side. Right? Y'all remember that story? Let's go over to the other side. And he goes to sleep in the bottom of the ship. And as he's sleeping in the bottom of the ship, there arises a great storm. As the storm is coming on, watch this what I'm getting ready to say. The storm is overtaking the ship. As the storm is overtaking the ship, what did they do? What did Peter do? Peter begins to panic. He goes down into the bow of the ship. Jesus, 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 master, does I care if not that we perish? And Jesus probably woke up, got coal in his eye. See who's this page and me and why. He goes over and tells them, where is your faith? And then he speaks to the winds and the waves. And he says to them, peace be still. Peter then begins to go, listen, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Watch what I'm getting ready to say. Jesus was able to speak peace and go to sleep because he was at peace. And you will only speak out of your mouth what's going on inside of you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So now, what, looking at this, when you have somebody coming to you with chaos and nonsense and drama and gossip, all it is is an indicator of what's going on inside of them. But if you're able to raise up and create an atmosphere of worship and create an atmosphere of praise and create an atmosphere to where it is you speaking by faith what it is that's going on inside of you, it is not you just professing something. You're professing what's going on inside of you. And when you have peace inside of you, you can change an entire atmosphere for what it is that God wants to do. Somebody say peace. Your perspective has to change. But you know when people begin to sink past the row? When what's on the outside of the ship starts to get on the inside of the ship. And then you begin to panic. If you want to be in a situation where you're not sinking, don't let what's on the outside affect what's going on on the inside. Yes, it's happening. Yes, I see it. Yes, I acknowledge it. But I declare that if God is for us, who can be against us? He's on our side. Everybody say this. Change your perspective. Because you can only speak with what's going on inside of you. Number two, you got to honor this process by getting ready to honor your process. A lot of people don't honor their process, good, bad, or indifferent. Oh, yeah. He has to prepare you, and the process is not always pretty, but he will prepare you. A bamboo tree is planted in the ground, and for five years, it develops underground. Five years. In three weeks, it shoots up 90 feet. When did it grow? In the, in the three weeks or the five years? The five years is where it developed. And God is saying, you have people who want the stage, but they don't want the steps. Hear me and hear me well. I might make this look easy. Roe may make this look easy. Pastor Mark, they may, they, they may make it. He make it look so easy. I be, I be, there, there's no jealousy in the spirit, but, but sometimes, it, them too, bro, too. I mean, I saw him preach at the retreat, and I just wanted to, to take my stuff and throw it away. Let me just tell you, because when you have preachers who can preach like that, let me tell you something. It looks easy, but you don't know the oil that's on their lives that allows them to do what they do. Oh, I'm going to talk about that in a second. So understand, understand this. They want the stage but they don't want the steps. 
And God is saying, if you don't honor the steps, then you will get to the stage and not have the character to stay there. Oh, we want the mic. We want the mic. We want to rock. We want to. No, 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 no. Lord, let me tell you something. If I knew everything I was going to go through, I would have put my little holy Pentecostal church finger up and. No, 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 I don't want this. No, but God, understand this. This is what happens, that people want the stage and they don't want the steps. And God is saying, listen, David had to be faithful over the sheep before he could face Goliath. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so you got to understand that there will be some heartbreak. There will be some disappointment. There will be some ups. There will be some downs, but don't skip the process. You got to go through it in order to get to the place that God is calling you to. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you, I'll give you the other side of my, my story on how I was called to preach. It was not conventional. It was not the way that everybody comes to preach and things like that, and minister and pastor. Uh, I, I think I gave the story one time. I told you I, w- I was given the assignment as prayer chaplain in my church at 21 years old. And as I was praying, my pastor said, I want you to do noonday prayer every day because I worked at the church. Noonday prayer every day at noon, and we're going to get the members to come in, and they're going to pray at 12. Okay. So I had a couple senior citizens and, you know, people who weren't working, and they came. And and then after about a month, nobody was coming. So I was praying by myself, praying by myself. So watch this. After about six months, I'm walking by the office one day, and my pastor said, where you going? Like, let's go out and get a bite to eat. And, and I said, I'm going to do noonday prayer. He said, we still doing that? <laughs> you, you know it's bad when the pastor don't even know yet you do it. But, <laughs> but let me tell you something. So he said, get ready to shut that down. You got, you got about another couple of weeks. And let me tell you, as I'm praying, I don't embellish, I don't add, I don't put stuff in stories. As I'm praying, the last week I had a visitation by an angel. And as I'm praying and as I'm laying prostrate, the angel spread his wings and he spread his wings and he said to me two things. He said, listen, touch one. And I remember it was a red, a ruby, and it was it was a rectangle shape. The the wings were filled with a root with with, with, with gems and, and diamonds and all these different types. He said, touch one. I touched it. And he said, from this day forward, you will never lack a word to preach. That's number one. This ain't no no rub, no genie. Amen. And to this day, I have not lacked a word to preach. He said, number two, whatever you touch, it is going to prosper as long as you are upright. Hey, let me me tell you something. He did not say perfect. He said upright, meaning this, as long as in my heart, my motives are pure on what it is that I'm doing, that God would honor it. And to this day, God has honored every single thing that I have put before him to do. Let me tell you, there is no secret what God can do. The method may not be conventional, but God, amen, will show you that I'm on your side and make the results undeniable. Who are you putting your trust in? So here it is. The process is where you develop character. The process is where you begin to learn. The process is where you get structure. The process is where you gain how to deal with adversity. And let me tell you something. The process is where it is behind the scenes, not in front of the people, behind the scenes. David learned how to be a warrior behind the scenes. David knew how to honor his father behind the scenes. David knew, amen, how to feast a a lion and a bear behind the scenes so that when you step out in public, people won't know what it is or how it is you can do what it is that you do. But God said, if you honor me in private, I'll bless you in public, but just make sure you give me the glory. Is there any glory people in this house on today? who will declare that I'm still here because of God on my side. There is no greater teacher than adversity. Hear me. There is no greater teacher than adversity. And I put this up the other day. Just because adversity is present doesn't mean that God is absent. Just because adversity is present doesn't mean that God is absent. And you can best assure that God is on the scene even if he isn't saying anything. But what he's doing is what? Preparing you. All right, number three. You can't skip over the ask of preparation. 
you got to honor your preparation process. You got to honor it. Am I all right? <laughs> Last time somebody said that, I, I ain't been back to preach. No, let me stop. <laughs> so, 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 so. What I did during the pandemic, I'm going to let you in. I've I, I just been very transparent these last three months, four months. I've just been very transparent. I, I don't care no more. I'm old now. I'm getting old in the ministry, older. <laughs> and, and, and the reality of it is this. I now have children in the ministry, and the children have children. So I'm a grandfather in the gospel. <laughs> I just ain't got no big, you know, no, no more. <laughs> so, so, so all I did over the pandemic was watch Chop. And then we chop this, chop, chop. <laughs> Watch chop, color, this stuff like. But 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 chop taught me the importance of prep. Oh, I I, I will cook. Oh, what you what you want? What you want? What you want? What, what do you want? Amen. We can get it rocking up in here right now. I gotta make some ziti tomorrow, so I want to if I'm should use the garlic powder or should I go with sazoon? What shall I got? <laughs> so, so I understand. I, I, I I'm just doing this stuff now. I'm cooking, doing all this. Watch this. So I had to understand something about preparation. Preparation. In order for a meal to be made, it has to be prepared. So, so if we're making a cake, come on, give me some ingredients. What do I need? Eggs. All right, protein, man, right there. All right, eggs. Protein. All right. All right, so we got eggs. Flour. What kind are we using? Processed, bleached. Um, what, what, what we going? That's that chopped in me, y'all. Forgive me. Uh, all right. All right. We got flour. Butter. Butter. Fat. All right. Sugar. Baking soda. Or baking powder or baking soda? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, see, that's that chopped in me. What else? What else? What else? Lemon extract. Lemon extract. Water. Okay. If not water, then we're going to go with some. Milk, there we go. So, so we take all these ingredients, right? She said lemon extract. We got vanilla extract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so here it is. If you take each of these ingredients and taste them by themselves, they don't taste too good. Not even the eggs unless you fry them. You have to do something to it. So, so I want you to hear something. You take the eggs and you eat them, they don't taste good. You take the butter and you eat them, they don't taste good. You take a, I've never seen anybody eating a spoonful of flour. I've just never seen it. I'm not saying that they, they hasn't happened, but, but I, I, you, you, you take the, the extract, it's ex, lemon extract or vanilla extract, it's very bitter. So, so, so you take all these things. I've never seen anybody eating spoonfuls of butter. So, so, so I've never seen anybody taking spoonfuls of sugar. But you, you take milk, milk is probably the, you take these ingredients and you have to mix them together. You have to mix them together. Watch what I'm getting ready to say. And then you have to pour them into a pan or some type of contraction that will be able to hold all of this and then put it in the oven. And sometimes when God really, really, really wants to make you into something, he allows you to get into some heat. And when you're in the heat, you develop and become what it is that you're supposed to be. All things work together. Somebody say all things. Not some things, not half things, all things. All things work together together for the good for them who love God and are called according to his purpose. Baby, it may not look good, but when I come out of this fire, I'm coming out slinging oil. When I come out of this trial, I'm coming out with a greater power. When I come out of this fire, I'm coming out being a greater prayer warrior. When I come out of this fire, I'm coming out with a greater understanding of what worship truly is. So understand that the fire that you have gone through, it wasn't sent to destroy you, but it was sent to make you better. Declare, amen, this is why the Lord said, Oh, oh, God. He said, follow me. Follow me. And I will make you into 
The reason why some people are not becoming or being made into is because they're not following. But if you follow him, oh, goodness, I just got a revelation. The reason when you follow the Lord, that means being a disciple. God is not going to come down. Jesus is not going to come down and take your temptation away from you. I'm telling you, he can. Even he was tempted, though. Like, like let, come on, come on, let's, let's, let's be real. He's not going to come down certain things. He's not, just, he, he's not, but all he wants you to do is keep following. Lord, I slipped and I messed up, but keep following. Lord, I didn't meet the mark, but I'm still following. Lord, and the more you follow, the more you become like him, and the more you become like him, the more he makes you. On today, God says, I want you to honor your process. Here it is. I hope I'm not boring you. The person next to you sleep, tell them wake up. <laughs> so here it is. The process is not pretty, but it's just a test to get you to where it is that God is calling you to. First Peter 5 and 10, it says this. Watch this. But the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, perfect, perfect, and I'm sorry, uh, perfect and established and strengthened and settles you. God is going to settle you. He's going to establish you. But the whole thing is this. The bigger the trial, the bigger the anointing. The bigger the test, the bigger the grace. God is saying, I'm taking you through this stuff because I got somewhere for you to go. Here it is. Number four, and lastly, you cannot forget the process to honor your purpose. Your purpose. Your purpose. What is your purpose? God created every single person with a purpose. The chair that you're sitting in, it has a purpose. The cameras, the mics, everything has a purpose. How much more of a purpose than you and I? Huh. Than you and I. So he says, I created you with a purpose. And David had one purpose. This one thing. Have I desired of the Lord that I may dwell in his house and inquire of his temple and behold the beauty of the Lord? David was a worshiper. And David behind the scenes, playing the lyre and the harp, worshiping God when this bear and this lion comes up on the scene. And as they come up on the scene, the spirit of the Lord comes upon David. And he takes his hands. And he kills the lion and he kills the bear because he knew how to honor God with his mouth. God is the reason why. Christ is the reason why we are here. He's the reason why we're here. And when we honor him, he honors us. He said, if you're ashamed of me before man, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. But if you honor me before man. I'll honor you before my father. So that's why the lion and the bear couldn't defeat him, because he knew how to worship. David was a worshiper. David used, amen, God, he used a slingshot. He used several different weapons. He was a man of war. But before any of that, he was a man of purpose. And when you tap into your purpose, there is no one or no thing that can stop you. Hear me what I'm getting ready to say. Because, because we don't understand the process that God wants to take us through sometimes. And it's not always pretty. And there are people in here, watch this, who have kept their mouths closed for too long with what they are going through. Not understanding, at the beginning of the year, the last time I came here to preach, and, and I think some of y'all might remember, I, I made an altar call and I was almost in the corner dying at the end. In fact, literally I was and didn't even know it. My blood pressure was 220 over 200, and I was having problems breathing, and I didn't understand why. Watch this. 
Because when you understand your purpose, the enemy can't stop you, but he'll do everything he can to deter you. So with that comes a change in diet, and with that comes a change in, 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 in perspective, and with that comes less stress, and with that, let me tell you something. Ain't no need in you dying and getting up out of here and everybody else going to be laughing and joking by your, by your repast. Y'all missing that, what I'm just saying. You're stressing over things that are killing you, and you have no business stressing over. Declare on today that this day I'm going to have a one-track mind. One track mind. Lord, if it's not important, I don't want to deal with it. If it's what it is that you have for me to do and be, then Lord, let it let it let me stand in that thing. But you have too many people not in their purpose because they're distracted by everything else. God is saying, I got giants for you to kill. But you can't skip the process. I got things that people to, for you to talk to and minister to. But are you prepared? Are you so worried about everything and everybody else that you're missing your assignment? is the leader of this house. Pastor Ro. Let's give you a pastor hand clap. Why are you so serious? Now watch this, what I'm getting ready to do. I don't know if I've ever done this here or not. People clap on two rhythms. One and two, I mean one and three and two and four. Y'all got me? So what happens is with stem cell research, they teach you that the zygotes find each other because of rhythm. So all the kidney cells will find each other because of rhythm. All the heart cells will find each other because of rhythm. All the brain cells will find each other because of rhythm. Watch this. I need y'all to do this with me real quick. Everybody, I need you to do it. Watch what happens. So, so what happens is everybody who has his rhythm can find him. And when you find him, you can connect with him. Now watch this. If you're clapping on your own rhythm, this may not be the place for you. But declare, amen, that I have to have my pastor's rhythm in order for the purpose to come to pass. And if you honor his rhythm, then God will honor you. If you honor his heart, then God will honor you. Yeah, he's a man, but guess what? He's God's man. Come on, keep the beat. So when you honor him, hear me what I'm getting ready to say. You're not just honoring him. You're honoring the anointing that's on his life. And if you're honoring the anointing that's on his life, you're not just honoring him and his family, but the anointing came from God. So as you honor him, then God will honor you. Give God a hand clap of praise right there. And just declare, I need his rhythm. God is going to bring people your way, bro. They're not going to look conventional. They're not going to look traditional. But they're going to have your heart and they're going to have your rhythm. Those are the ones that God is saying. Take them, train them, teach them, and let them go to win the city, to win the world for what it is that's in your heart. Oh, can I give you this? I'm in overtime and this is the last thing I'm going to give you. God will only grow your ministry, hear me, Lee, to the size of your heart. To the size of your heart. What you're trying to do, God is only going to grow your ministry to the size of what's in your heart. So 
told you, I'm in the season of transparency, so here we go. A turtle has the heart the size of the top part of my pinky. A giraffe has a heart the size of a bag of cement. Why does it need a heart that big? Because it's a big animal. And in order to get the blood to flow through the giraffe, it needs a big heart. The turtle doesn't need that size of a heart because it's a smaller animal. And if God needed it to be a bigger animal, he would have gave it a bigger heart. God will always grow your ministry to the size of your heart. And because you didn't make it about you, and because you didn't make it about all, all, all that some perceived to be a, 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 a grandiose, because you didn't make it about what you wanted, God says he's going to give you the desires of your heart. Everything that you pray for, God says he's going to give it to you. Everything that you desire, everything that you see, though the vision tarry, wait, because it's going to happen. But God says your downtime is your prep time. Your downtime is your prep time. Your downtime is time for you to get ready for what's getting ready to come next. Peter, what are you doing? I'm washing my nets. I'm getting ready for this great catch. I'm getting ready for this great catch. And how many of you would declare on today? My perspective is changing. My process is getting me ready. My preparation is what I've gone through. But I'm getting ready to move into my purpose. And I honor each step along the way. Everyone standing all over this house, amen. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? I mean it. People don't understand and didn't know. I'm going to let this worship team sing and hand this mic over. Because it didn't seem like much. But the process, wax on, wax off. Sand left, sand right. Let me tell you something. Even in my own life, I tell people, the oil that I preach with, the fire that I face and the attacks that I've gone through, you got to know without a shadow of a doubt who you are. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. Let me tell you something. 17 to 31, that same pastor that I told you about that vision, he was leaving the church and, 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 and thought I could not handle a bigger church and ministry, so they sent me to New York. I'm in New York. My family got treated so bad, so bad. But yet and still, the church is still growing and moving. Some of y'all remember being there. I had $18,000 in the account when I took over with 15 people. And in two years, I amassed over $300,000. But yet and still, they wouldn't give me a gas card and an easy pass traveling from Jersey. I'm talking about pain, y'all. I leave. I go to Newark thinking it's closer to home. Hey, you know what? I can be around my child. She was smaller at the time growing up. And in six weeks, this was a church that had two services. In six weeks with me being there, we were about to go to four services because that's how much the people were coming. People got jealous. People got upset. So guess what? The district doesn't want to give you a license, and you have to leave immediately. No severance pay. No, 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 no. Don't, don't worry about telling the church. We'll tell them. You have to go. We're talking about the of oil, the process. So I go into a depression. I was up to almost 400 pounds. That's when y'all met me. God has saved and sanctified me since then. Amen. <laughs> but, but using my credit cards to max up and pay bills and, and do this and do that. Then, then God gives me another ministry in Woodland Park. The church is moving. The church is growing. Starting from scratch. New experience for me. And then the person I'm renting the building from dies from COVID. And then the owner doesn't want to rent to me. that not only that not only that hear me what I'm getting ready to say I get a notice from the IRS from my days in New York at Astoria let me change the name so that the innocent will not be 
that I owe $20,000 to the IRS. My wife said, Dad, I'm out. She leaves. So, but I'm still called. I'm still anointed. But if you understand this process of what it means to be called by God, you understand that God has already declared the end from the beginning and your end, your latter days will be greater than your former days. Hear me what I'm getting ready to say. The very last thing my mother said to me before she died. This ain't no sob story, y'all. This is a testimony of, of what it costs when you honor the process, when you don't take shortcuts, when you don't. Last words my mother said to me were keep going. And I didn't understand it till later. I may not get there with you, but I need you to keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. The reason why I can talk about this, like Jesus, this, this is not a uh, uh, oh, oh, he's still wounded. Oh, he's still hurt. Let me tell you something. When Jesus showed up to Thomas, he was able to show his wounds. And he told him, guess what? Go ahead and touch me. Put your, put your nails through my nail points. Go ahead, touch my side. He said, touch me. Because it doesn't hurt anymore. The only thing you will conceal and hide is the thing that still hurts. But he who the Son has set free is free indeed. God is saying on today, amen, to the men, to the brothers, to the fathers, to the mothers, to the sisters, to Kuha, my family, trust your process. Honor your process. Honor your leader. Believe that where you are now is not where you're going to end up. How many of us are ready to keep going? We're getting ready to keep going. We're getting ready to keep going into what it is that God has for us. Is it all right, Pastor, if I have an altar call? Come on. We're getting ready to keep going. We're getting ready to keep going. This step that we're getting ready to make and these moves that we're getting ready to make is because we're not staying stagnant with where we are. But we're declaring that God is on our side and he's keeping us going. Lord, there are some things that are going on that I can't even talk to people about. But God, I'm going to keep going. There are certain things going on in my heart and in my spirit and in my mind that I wish I had somebody to talk to. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to be, a, I will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. I want you to keep going. If you're ready to make this next move, to move into purpose, to move into the, uh, prosperity, to move into a, a, a promise, to move into whatever it is that God is calling you to, I need you to step out of your seat and move right now. This call is not for the faint of heart. Amen. I was able to expose myself, but how many of you will be able to expose yourself and declare, I still need another touch from the Lord. Yeah, I got one last week. I got one the week before, but I need one on today. I need one for this promise. I need one for this purpose. I need one for this reason. I need one for my family. I need one for my marriage. I need one for my finances. I need, Lord, I need you to keep me going in this. And Lord, what I do in private, you're going to bless and reward me for openly in public. Lift your hands up right there. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask right now that you would Bless these people who had the courage to come out of their seats and step up before you. Lord, I pray that you will honor their moving. Honor them, Lord God. Honor each and every single one of them. They came with an expectation. Lord, meet it in not too many days hence from now. Lord, throughout the course of this week, I pray that you would supernaturally meet their needs. Supernaturally meet them where they need to be met at right now. Lord, right now there is somebody who can't even tell about the tears that they cry at night. But Lord, right now you said, I'll be a comforter to you. That he's touching your heart right now. Right now, right now. Right now. 